Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to share a little personal testimony with you about the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures, and how precious they are to me. And I know to my wife also, the devil would want you not to read the Word. He would tell you that you don't need to read the Word. All you got to do is hear the voice of God, the Spirit. That's it. The Word's a dead letter. That's what the devil will tell you. You've heard it said before, you know, uh, the devil knows the Scripture better than anybody. No, he doesn't. He doesn't know it better than the Holy Spirit. He doesn't know it better than me, okay? Because I don't twist the Word. I don't rest it. I don't take it out of context. The principles that are laid down, that God has laid down in his word, the holy oracles that God breathed into men, and he spoke his word, it will not return to him void. It will do what he sent it forth to do. The importance of reading the word in my own life goes back when I was a little boy, I was about seven years old. I was in the Roman Catholic Church at the time, and I was a rebellious punk. But I wanted Jesus, see. In the Catholic Church, they teach you that Jesus is in that little wafer, but he's not. It's a piece of bread, okay? It's just a piece of bread the nuns made. That's all it is. Jesus Christ right now is at the Father's right hand in a flesh and bone body with nail scars in his hands and feet and a pierced side. Hallelujah. Ever living to make intercession for us. And he sent forth his spirit from the Father to us. Hallelujah. And he said in John 14, him and the Father and the spirit would take up residence, would make their abode inside of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he gave us the written word because by the written word, the holy word of God, we can check the spirit. John said in 1 John 4 to test the spirits, try the spirits to see if they be of God. How do you try them? What's the standard are you using? Your feeling? Your emotion? Hey, the devil can give you fire. The devil can give you a great joyful feeling. He can give you rejoicing. He can make you feel all giddy. Yeah, he can make you think you're walking in heaven. Jesus said, be careful. He, Jesus said, watch out that the light in you is not darkness, for how deep is the darkness. Hallelujah. And you do that by staying in the Word and studying. See, and praying, praying the Word, praying the Word. That's what George Mueller did. He prayed the Word. He brought to the Father's remembrance, you know, hey, when the orphans, they were they didn't have any money at all. And they, had to, they had to have three pounds that day. And then he just opened up the word and said, Lord, you said you're a father of the fatherless. You will not forsake your children, Lord. And then, bam, here would come the three pounds. See, because George Mueller had faith, and his faith was strengthened because he stayed in the word. Hallelujah. Stay in the Word of God. When I was when I was 18, okay, anyway, when I was 7, I, I began to read the Bible. My parents had this big Bible, and I would read it, and I read the red letters. Oh, man, I loved them. It was Jesus speaking to me, see? It was his voice speaking to me, his word, hallelujah. But I was still a punk, still rebellious, into drugs and everything from the age of 7 right up until the age of 18. And when I was 18, my sister died in an automobile accident. It made me start thinking about seriously about you know god and the things of, of the lord and i got saved at a baptist convention and after i was saved i hadn't got baptized yet but i got into the word i started reading the bible and i was really walking with the lord and then one day i stopped reading the word i was reading the bible like two hours a day three hours a day but then i stopped reading it a little bit and then stopped reading it a little more and a little more and a little more and before I knew it, I was backslidden, totally backslidden from 1985 until 1994, nine years. I was backslidden, totally. But see, God, in his word, he tells us, I'm married to the backslider. Hallelujah. Come, come back. That's what he says. I'm married to the backslider. And he, 
and he brought me back. He brought circumstances to bear in my life where I cried out to him. And I said, Lord, you got to change my life. you got to do it, Lord. See, my will is too strong, Lord, in rebellion. you got to change me. you got to make me whole. And he did. And he still is. He's making me whole, even right now. He's sanctifying me more and more, setting me apart more and more every day as I stay in the Word. It's so vitally important that we stay in the Word. Don't try to dissuade people from reading the Bible. Stay in your stay in your word. You know, we're coming up on a time right now where if if we're not grounded in the word of God and the word of truth, okay, because that's what it is. It's holy, it's pure. See? Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Hallelujah. For all of eternity we're going to be being perfected by the word of God. You know, when God's sitting on his throne and he's, and we're all in heaven one day and he's sitting there and we're all worshiping God and he's sitting there just, I don't know how he looks, but he just looks majestic. He looks awesome. He looks terrible. Oh, he's a terrible God. See, he's terrible. That's what David wrote in the Psalms. And and we're just going to be worshiping the Lord, hallelujah, in the spirit of holiness. We can do that now, hallelujah, praise God, and we do. And all of a sudden, when he speaks out of his mouth, then we don't have to, we don't, we don't have to worship then, right, when he's speaking out of his mouth. No, see, the Bible was written by the Holy Spirit, okay? It is the spirit that gives life. The letter kills. That's what the word says. See, if you think it's just a letter and you think it's just nothing and it's just a it's just a written word on a page, okay, it's just a paper, okay, then you can be like, you know, the king, uh, I believe it was Jehoiakim, who or one of the kings in the book of Jeremiah, he took the he took the written word and just cut it with a pen knife. He cut it with his knife and he just Threw it in the fire. See? Well, God said, write it again, Jeremiah. Put it down. And now we have those words today. See, Jeremiah was a prophet to the nations. His prophecies are still coming to pass today. See? It's it's a living word. It's doing its work. It's living. It's true. It's pure. I believe this. I know it to be true. The devil hates the word of God. He hates it. See? And he twists it. He takes one verse. The one verse they like to use is is John 6.63, where it says, uh, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Well, they use that and they say, well, you know, this is just a dead letter. They say, this is dead letter right here. This is this is just a dead letter. Your your uh, your Bible studies and all that stuff won't help you. See, you have to hear the voice. And if you don't hear the voice, you're going to hell. That's a lie. See? You have to get into the Word to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman rightly dividing the Word of truth. See? When you do that, the Holy Spirit speaks to you in your heart, and he confirms the Word that he already breathed thousands of years ago. Hallelujah. He confirms this Word. See? The principles in here are, are everlasting. They will last forever and eternity. Hallelujah. And we can base our lives on these principles that God has laid down. It's vitally important that we stay in the Word. Stay in the Word of God. And don't teach people not to be in the Word. Oh, that's working for the devil. That's working for the devil. You stay in the Word of God like the great men of old. Like the great saints today who are staying in the Word, studying to show themselves approved unto God, workmen rightly dividing the Word of truth. It's very important. In Jesus' name, stay in the Word. Don't be moved off of that. And stay in prayer, seeking the face of your Father. He says, hey, in the Word it says in Philippians 4, what does it say? It says, with all thanksgiving make your supplications be known unto me, says the Lord. You know, come unto me and, and with thanksgiving, be grateful unto me, and then let your request be known unto me, and I will meet everything that you need. See, that's what the, that's what the Bible says. 
He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. Hallelujah. These are words to live by. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Be strengthened today and stay in the word. Hallelujah.